And now, Daljit Dhaliwal. The leader of the Tamil Tiger rebels, Velupalai Prabhakaran, may be dead, but Sri Lanka's problems are far from over. To discuss the latest developments and the future of the Tamil people is Dr. Deepa Olapalli, Associate Director of the Seeger Center for Asian Studies at George Washington University. Deepa, welcome back to the program. Good to see you again. Thank you. So where does the country go from here, uh, Deepa? What, what is the plan for what happens next? Well, this is a, the big question right now because one of the problems has been that with the new Sri Lankan government that's been in power for the last uh, four years, we have never seen a political plan from their part for settling the Tamil Sinhalese um, conflict. They're, they're, it seemed as if they came into power with a military uh, victory in mind and uh, leaving aside all the political niceties. And so here we are today when they have obviously achieved a, a stunning military victory, but behind that, one wonders what the next steps are. And I think uh, many of the things that drove this conflict, that fueled the Tamil uh, insurgent movement, those grievances have really not been met yet. And the question is, uh, you know, what incentives does the government have now to make sure that, that they're able to um, now reach out and begin a reconciliation that's not going to be very easy mm. given the kind of... Well, if, I mean, if they have won the war, what incentives do they have to come up with any kind of far-reaching political solutions to this problem? And who's going to force their hand? Right. Well, right now, of course, the government is, um, is facing uh, some pressure from the international community to try and um, settle this conflict once and for all in a in a, in a fair way to the Tamils, because right now the Tamils are without, as you know, without any real leadership. Um, the Tigers were kind of concentrated their political power so much that there was very other uh, options for the uh, Tamil groups. And now here we are with, uh, uh, w without a real leadership, real political vacuum for the Tamils. And I think there's a danger that the Tamil minority um, is right now very vulnerable they um, are really at the mercy of the, of the government to come up with something. And I think there are some political patrons outside that could push the government toward this. Of course, you mean the, the Tamil diaspora the, the who Tamil has diaspora. been supportive in terms of funding and its political support and keeping the, the movement going all these years? Well, that's certainly one, uh, one group that, that, that has a lot to lose because many of them, of course, are uh, refugees from Sri Lanka, so they have a lot of uh, connections back home. And uh, right now, uh, th 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 they would be a, a pressure group uh, pushing the international community, the humanitarian organizations, United Nations, and so on, to keep the uh, government honest, in a sense, to make them accountable and to deliver some of the promises that you do hear uh, from the government right now, uh, the need for more devolution of power. But, you know, the question is, we have heard many of these promises before, and in terms of giving autonomy, cultural, economic, political autonomy to the traditional Tamil areas in the north and in the east, um, one by one, these promises have been broken, and therefore that's part of the reason that the whole, that the insurgency was fueled for 30 plus so, years. So at this particular juncture, what would be acceptable um, to the Tamil community? Uh, the Tamils, the main uh, grievance from the beginning has been um, that, you know, there's a lot of discrimination against the minority, both in terms of culture and e economy, for instance, it, this started because in 1950s they passed a Sinhala only bill, which of course put the Tamil language at risk. Um, in the 1970s, the uh, government started a reverse affirmative action uh, program favoring the majority and therefore in jobs, in university admissions, and so on. So that again uh, gave little confidence to the Tamils. So really you've, you've seen... So none of these grievances really since the 1950s have been tackled either in jobs, in terms of education, in terms of giving parity to the Tamil language? Uh, the, the only thing that has changed is the Tamil language. They, they, um, a few years ago they made it a national language as well. But in terms of the other policies, no. And so one, and, and of course part of the problem has been that, you know, there have been a war waged for the last 30 plus years and so uh, the uh, negotiations that have taken place have never gone 
uh, completely to the end to actually come to an understanding. Mm -hmm. So there's not a lot of faith, I think, um, on the part of the Tamils that somehow the government now, when they're standing victoriously, that uh, they are in fact going to uh, uh, allow concessions and, and, and redress some of these grievances. On the other hand, this is a moment when the government clearly has the upper hand and can be perhaps magnanimous and uh, uh, more generous. Uh, and so one, one hopes that that's the path that the government will take. Mm. Deepa Olapali, great to have you back on the program. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.